Welcome to the Nostalgia Test Podcast, the show where two longtime friends put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the Nostalgia Test. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of the Nostalgia Test Podcast. I'm Dan Dissinger here in LA, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, well, longtime friend and co-host, Manny Quayle there in New York. Manny, how are you doing? Dude, first of all, I can't believe you almost missed the intro drop by yeah. not saying long, long-time friend. Almost the hell is that all about? Almost screwed it yeah. up. <laughs> but I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I am a very jolly. Let's just say... Ah. I like the Christmas season and I like that we're doing themed season on this one. Yeah. And because of this, watching this test kicked off me watching C minus to C plus to B minus to B plus to A's Christmas movies all weekend long, like out of the woodwork Christmas, Christmas movies, some crazy stupid movies, holiday, really what the hell was that movie? Freaking Princess Switch. Oh, okay. that's a good one. The Princess Switch. <laughs> Dude, all of those movies, all of those movies are gold. gold. Especially when they have to nope. go to some small town where all of a sudden it is Christmas and Santa's mm-hmm. there. And Dean Kane shows up. It's just like, what? <laughs> Dude, but I got to say, this I didn't realize. 2018 Christmas Chronicles with Kurt Russell. I got to see it. Oh, my God. Is it good? I would say it's a good B, B plus. Uh-huh. It's good in all Christmas movies about Santa Claus. Yeah, there's not many new Christmas um, movies that I like that right. go past the B minus C plus for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, not like the ones w- one where we're just about to do, which, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, is Ooh. the Tim Allen's yes Santa Claus. Yes, okay. T- nineteen. 94 Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. I mean, what? I mean, first of all, I'm going to come right out and just be brave and say, I forgot. I didn't even know that there was an E at the end so that it was not The Santa Claus and it was Santa Claus, like a like a clause in a contract. And when I was watching it the uh, the other day, it I brings was it like, up. Oh, that's yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? What is wrong with me? But the Tim Allen 1994 American Christmas comedy film written by uh, Leo Benvenuti and Steve Rudnick and directed by John uh, Pasquin. Uh, the first film in the Santa Claus film series. This is the first of a trilogy. Stars Tim <sighs> Allen as Scott Calvin, an ordinary man who accidentally causes Santa Claus played by Tim Allen's actual stunt double, to fall from his roof on Christmas Eve. When he and his young son, Charlie, finish St. Nick's trip and deliveries, they go to North Pole, where Scott learns that he must become the new Santa and convince those he loves that he is indeed Santa Claus. The film was released on November 11th, 1994. It was budgeted at $22 million, and it grossed $189 million. It, wow. Dude. Wow. Dude. This, if this doesn't make the top five lists of all best Christmas movies, ah. y'all basic. Well, y'all that's what I mean. I don't, I don't ever think of this movie coming up that much in discussion when, when, when Christmas movies are talked about. Like, you don't hear people talk no. about Santa Claus, which it's weird it to me. Blows my mind. And I will say that I don't really watch it that often. Mm-mm. Um, my, my go-to, like, it's Christmas, is Elf. Okay? Yes, of course. If you don't have to that, boom. If you don't yeah. like Wolf Hour, you don't like it. But Elf, number one, that's the Christmas movie I'm going to be watching about five or six times before the end of the holidays. Okay? Yes. But, like, you know, and then I get into other things, and you'll get the, you know, jingle all the way every once in a while. You know, <laughs> but it's not, like, it's not, like, on the top list of, like, I know it's not, like, of all time. It's ironically good. Like, you know, yeah. it's ironically cheesy. It's kind of in the B, B plus. Maybe some would say it's an A minus, but you never really, like Santa Claus, the, the, the Santa Claus doesn't come up. No, it doesn't. Like, even in, if you search some of the Instagram posts that have been going up, the people that we follow, mm-hmm. like, 
it didn't even come up as an option. Not at all. It doesn't come up as an option. No one talks about it. And, and no one talks about the other two. You know what I mean? And, and I got to say, it's that. a pretty good fucking tril- trilogy. I've never it's seen the good. other two, but I definitely. It's pretty good. One. Yeah. 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 And if you don't agree with me, you listening, you're all basic. Why? Because Manny, first call of them all, out. <laughs> first of all, it's a Christmas movie. Let's mm. let's get into this. OK, all boom, right. let's back down and just realize we're watching <laughs> movies that are like you want to talk about being uh, suspending your disbelief and like getting into the movie and just like falling right into it. Christmas movies are the test of all times. Like, can you fall into this world in which jolliness happens all the time? Yeah. And then you have to then, this is how I feel. I go, okay, I'm in holiday season. I have to grade everything based on that. That's the curve, Dan. I don't base this on like, okay, if you take away holidays and you watch these movies, these movies are terrible. These movies don't stack up. Okay. They're terrible. They're easy. They're easy to figure out, whatever. But yeah. now you're in jolly land. Okay. We're in that season, holiday season. So we're not judging it on point break. We're not judging it on mission impossible. We're not going to goodwill hunting. Okay. No, 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 no. We're in jolly land. Okay. Yes. This movie, how it didn't come up in lists is beyond me. I, I can't. It's beyond even, me. Yeah. Because people already know while they're listening what, the, what we're going to, yeah, rate this, but I gotta go through this, Dan. I gotta get to. in because I watched it and I go, "Oh my god, this is a good yeah. movie." I laughed a lot. Like I was laughed. Like, Whoa! There was some little digs. Yeah, like, it was. Oh. It, and this is Tim Allen at his height. They might you know have I mean? <laughs> Tim Allen at the height of like everything, and that's what's funny. Like, I, first of all, just to even like open up about you know the idea seeing tim allen on tv is always like brings us me back to our road trip when we sat in i think louisiana and new orleans like kind of like for a day just being like uh watching home improvement <laughs> <laughs> because like we had to just like i don't know take a recover. break over um, yeah so it's really funny to see that but at the same time I, I am after watching it, I was like, why don't I watch this more often? Like you said, you're right. I have the ones that I watched during Christmas, like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I'm going to watch, of course, several times. And I love that movie. Um, Elf, you're right. I'm going to watch that. A Christmas Story. I, I'm going to try and watch that definitely. You know, all these yes. things. But I know. Those never three of the to top that. three. And then maybe I'll get into It's a Wonderful Life if I'm with people that are like, yeah. that want to get that deep with that movie. Because that yeah. movie's like, Movie's yeah. a little deep. And I've already watched uh, Miracle on 34th Street, like the original oh, one. I've already the original? watched original. Oh, the original one's amazing. I, you know, I've only watched last year I watched the the remake, the yeah. reboot or whatever of it. So the original one. The original one's way that. better because one thing I'll say about this, this the guy who played Santa in the reboot, I, I can't look at him and not see him as the creator of Jurassic Park. So when I look at the original oh. one, I'm like I'm like, all right, this guy is Santa Claus. He he looks like Santa. And it's funny to watch everyone in that time period, like as well. But it, to me, it works better as an older movie. Got it. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I mean, here we are talking about the Santa Claus. But you're right. Everything we just said should include the Santa Claus. I believe, and I obviously see that you believe too. That just amazes me that they that the Santa Claus isn't talked about more as a holiday film that people should watch um, every holiday. What was the rating on this? On IMDb, it, uh, it only got a 6.5 out of 10 rating, which, I mean, I guess that's good. I, I don't know. like. But what are they rating it on? Are they using the scale of Jolly Scale? They're not like, using the Jolly Scale. Uh, well, they should. Use... <laughs> okay. should be based right. on that. You can't be basing this on freaking, you know, Shawshank Redemption. No. This no. is a Christmas movie. Absolutely. This should only be based on that. That's like rating Christmas songs. Mm-hmm. Okay, it got a really high Rotten Tomatoes rating. Um, so that's great. Hells yeah. It got like what a 71, a 65% audience score and the tomato meter 71%, I guess. So okay. That's, that's a really high score um, for the Santa Claus. And I think that 
it it deserves every point that it gets. I I would agree. Yeah, but still no. not talked about. But so so here we well, are. Well, we're going to talk about it. We yeah, haven't we even op- we haven't even talked about the opening. No, the everything about the the nineties of this movie. Oh, the nineties okay. of this movie. The typical nineties opener. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, shoulder pads for days. <laughs> shoulder pads for days. Yes. <laughs> Puffy windbreaker jackets. Puffy wind. Oh my god, I love it. That had like random colors on it. Yeah. That looked like you took a quilt <laughs> and just designed things with that. But okay. because those jackets look so puffy, because the weight, the band at the bottom of the jacket, those windbreakers, oh. was that elastic thing that's like, like, like yeah. just like grabbed your waist. So it made everything. Everybody like wanted bigger. to show their waist. Yeah. Did you see the mom pants and oh, the yeah. tucked in t shirt? Who tucks yeah. in their t shirt, Dan? I don't tuck in my When's the last time you. When's the last time you saw somebody tucking in a t-shirt? Uh, repeats of Seinfeld. That's it. Dude, 90s. Yeah. Tucked right. in t-shirts. Tucked in everything. Tucked I don't even in tuck everything. in. I don't even tuck in my, my button shirts anymore. No, there's no need to tuck. What do you need to tuck? So, yeah. So we open I'm not even movie. wearing pants, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so we're open, we open this film and it's scott calvin tim allen's character at a party he's a toy seller or he works for a toy company or advertising works for, company. yeah works for an advertiser yeah. uh, it's the typical it's the typical yeah christmas story like the guy who works at the ceo of something that has to do with toys yeah he doesn't care about anything he doesn't right. really care about his family or kids because everybody at this christmas party the family wasn't invited so everybody's no. just you know yeah, yeah. And his kid's waiting for him. Uh, Tim Allen's character gets an award. He gets an award with a co-worker. And as that co-worker, this, uh, you know, his co-worker, this woman is talking. What does he do? Scott Calvin pushes her out of the way and just takes over the speech. I'm just like, okay, all right. This guy's a yeah, dick. Scott, but, but I have to say, Scott Calvin is, is a dick for much shorter of a time yeah. than I thought he was going to be a dick for. Yeah, he's what's not... a dick for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not that. Yeah, for he's not that for not that long. And it, what's funny is that I thought it was gonna be longer, Dan. It should have been longer. They kind of they kind of like jumped the shark on that. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he should have been more of a dick for like a little bit more than ten more minutes. Ten I mean, more minutes of. The- yeah, you remember like uh, you ever see that movie, The Family Man, with Nicolas Cage? Yes. It should have been a little more like that, but also we're in a PG film. So, but at the same we time, and we have to get right to it. Yeah, we have to get right to it. People's attention spans are short. We got to get moving. It's Tim Allen, whatever. But you're right. I think they should have made him a little more of a of a dick. But <laughs> but there's a scene that we're gonna talk about that like I think they really capture the mo like they capture like, yeah. how much of an idiot he is and how much his kid first of all this kid Charlie this kid hates him in the beginning of film this kid hates his guts it's just like fed up with his ass like it's ridiculous this kid but this kid we gotta talk about Charlie because Charlie oh, whew, God. all right so so. We open up, obviously he's lying, he's late, he doesn't yeah. care, he's trying to get home. You know, he's making excuses that he's in, tra- in traffic. Yelling at an imaginary woman again. Yeah. Yelling at yeah. women. <laughs> yeah. The whole, the whole theme of that is divorce, he's a divorced father. Yeah. He hates his, um, his son's new dad or whatever, new yeah. fiance, boyfriend, whatever. Played by and Judge Ryan. he's constantly... Hart. Love him in this because <laughs> we fee- we see his first awful sweater. Oh God! the The joke of the sweater That's with amazing. him is amazing. <laughs> he basically took Ross's outfits from <laughs> Friends. Yeah. Well, Ross took it from him because, oh. the, dude, the 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 sweater game that this guy has amazing is. I want those sweaters. You where can't do you get even, those sweaters. Where do you get sweaters like, like that? They make a, like what are called ugly sweaters now, but like they're all just funny now. That yeah. sweater was made oh, by yeah. someone who actually thought that was a great sweater, man. Yeah, they thought that was a good idea. They didn't call that ugly sweaters. No, they just called that it was a sweater. sweater that was that was mass produced <laughs> and sold, folded in, in stores. It's at J.C. Penney's. 
<laughs> pennies. During the holidays. Sears. Okay. Some man or woman had to get paid minimum wage <laughs> to fold these sweaters. In 94. In minimum wage in 94. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. oh, my. oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> And like oh, Scott Calvin man. does not want to call him a real doctor. He calls him a psychiatrist the whole time. Was this like a thing against psychiatrists? This yeah, there's, there's always a thing I feel like in movies against psychiatrists, like the, there's always a joke against them. But you also got to um, you also got to like, I feel like put in there like Tim Allen is also in many ways his character from Home Improvement in this film. I mean, he picks up a tool belt when he's in the North Pole. I mean, come on. And, and so like, I feel like yeah. it's his idea of like, shaming this man for being i don't know a psychiatrist in like that way that men shame other men for doing like you know the jobs that they think are useless sure oh, yeah. but um so then whatever he he obviously sucks at like what is it supposed to be christmas eve yeah it's literally christmas eve and they're playing that song as he's driving through a town i don't know where this town is and it's like that oh, da, 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 da. it's just like this yeah. like the stakes are so high but he's uh, only, he's late. Sure, that's part. yeah <laughs> he doesn't really care and so he, he burns the, the turkey oh my god dude and and i know this scene you loved because Dude, I forgot about this scene. He burned that turkey, but that turkey was on fire. And when it went on fire and spontaneously combusted again, everything yeah. was on fire. The tray, the whole thing just like lit up. And it, it's like the craziest scene I've ever seen. Um, that kid is begging his mom not to leave him. He's like, please don't leave me. It's like, yeah, I don't need to stay here. How bad is this dad? Like, I mean, he's not like, well, you like know. He, he obviously doesn't seem to care too much yeah. for like 10 minutes. But yeah. like the best is like where everything's closed except for the Denny's. But but wait, 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 wait. Before we jump to Denny's, the idea is like, how old do you think Charlie is? I hate Charlie. Um just want to say that. Uh <laughs> first of all, can we just talk about before we say how old do you think Charlie is? Do you know how old Scott Calvin's supposed to be in this? Yes. 38. No, 39. 38. 38 no, 38. 39. 38. They say yeah. in the police in the police department. Yeah. 38, 38 years old. Yeah. Guy is a year younger than me. D- and he looked like, I don't know, because he looked like 50 in my eyes. I was like, dude, I thought he was going to be like 50. Forget about the fact that he looked like Santa Claus at one point. But like everyone else, 38? I almost jumped out of my skin when I heard that. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. And Tim Allen at that time? Was only was also like forty or something like that. So really? he was playing pretty close to the age of his um, character. So that blew my mind because I looked no. in the mirror and I was like, D-. "Yeah, <laughs> I thought the same thing, dude." <laughs> I was like, "In the other part, I'm like, wow, he's doing pretty well for himself." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah. I, I was I couldn't believe that I almost lost it I was like no way no fucking way um, but yeah I, Charlie it's got to be like what eight years old maybe and no he's got to be like eight because like they go to the class right but he's he's pretty young because he's like his imagination is still there like pretty pretty good imagination yeah and Judge Reinhold this asshole tells an eight-year-old that there's no santa claus and the mom's okay with it yeah the mom is weird and what does she do for a living is she a lawyer what is she i I don't know what she does for a living i thought what she did was like um impersonate uma thurman from pulp fiction because she had the same exact haircut as her from pulp fiction and i was just like oh man the kid's haircut too man like uh, to me i was mesmerized about that bowl that the kid had on top of (laughs) a bowl cut (laughs) oh my god Oh, I had that haircut, dude. I, had, oh. I pretty much have that haircut now. I think we but, all um, have that haircut. Yeah. So, oh, all right. We God. haven't even. Of course, we went on rants here. It's been like I don't know how long, and we haven't even got to the beginning of this movie of what happens. So, he's, so he's, he, yeah. they they go to Denny's. <laughs> I don't know what the scene <laughs> with all the Asian men that are there. Well, he says it's an American institution. Let's go to Denny's. It's an American oh, institution. 
He's like, I don't okay. want to eat here. The kid, I would be like, kid, there was just a fire in my kitchen. I tried my best to make a turkey. First yeah. of all, turkeys don't go on fire like that. I, I've never. First of all, that. who's? It's just the two of them. Why are they making such a big meal? I have no idea. He really wants Charlie to love him, but like, they go and I love that music, dude. I love that music. Bo bo bo. That was like <laughs> hilarious. And then he's like, all right, well, either Denny's is an American institution. And it's like all the you know Asian businessmen in there. And then they bring them because Charlie's like, he burned the turkey. And then this hostess or waitress is like, oh, yeah, okay, come this way. They usher <laughs> Tim Allen and this kid into the saddest back room of Denny's ever and it's just all divorced dads and their kids at Denny's <laughs> it's like the greatest it's the greatest scene I have ever seen that was hilarious I mean I was like I want more of this like I want to know about yeah that didn't guys. last that long that joke was fun like pretty good like the guy's hand was burnt <laughs> off or whatever. And it was like, this is where all the dads go who have no idea how to cook. All the shitty dads and the kids are like, I hate this. They bring him to Denny's. Now, I, I, when I was just like, I wish there was a callback to these dads when he became Santa. Like he goes and helps them out. Like he shows up at Denny's yeah. next year. Because that would have been great. But, you know, whatever. But, oh my God. That was that's a, like. That's funny. Oh that would have been a good callback. Amazing. Just amazing. And he keeps trying to order food that they don't have. <laughs> like, we don't have that. He's like, all right. Okay. <laughs> so, good thing we have apple pie. We're out. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Charlie. Just like my dad sucks. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Yo, but Charlie has like somewhat high spirits for his father. Because like mm-hmm. he's still kind of okay with him. To, you know, he's there. He's listening to the story. Yeah, yeah. Asking what's a clatter. Yeah. I don't want a ladder. You know, whatever. <laughs> you hear the story. What I want to know is why is the Santa Claus so loud? Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Because at, when they go home, obviously, the story has to keep going. And Santa crashes into their house. I mean, I, it sounded like he crashed onto their roof. He crashed into the house. I'm like, this is the only kid in America that heard that? He wakes up. <laughs> Wakes up his father. So, and they, the, the Santa Claus, first of all, I believe did all this on purpose. Yeah. This I'm Santa sure. Claus didn't want to be Santa Claus anymore. And I'm going to tell you why. I had, yeah, go. He's wearing slippery boots on purpose because this is the first time he's ever been on a roof. Yeah. I, they, I want, he gets how... startled that quickly that he slips and they don't have like non slip boots. Okay. So he's being loud. Mm -hmm. right he's taking forever Mm -hmm. getting into this chimney where you find out he can actually just hold the bag and float into the chimney so boom right there why is he walking on the roof okay i don't know get startled by tim by just saying hey was the first time out of all the times that this guy's been santa claus that he startled people he obviously is loud so he gets startled that quickly (laughs) you would have been waiting for that if you're Santa Claus. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm analyzing Santa Claus right now. Okay. <laughs> he falls off, right? And dies instantly. How weak is this man? <laughs> Dude, his bones are made of glass. Like he literally Tim Allen murdered Santa. I mean, literally. First I mean, of all, yes. Because so you could look at it that way. Okay. You could look if you don't look at it as the conspiracy in my eyes that Santa Claus wanted to go. But <laughs> you you Tim Allen scared the living crap out of this guy made him fall and killed santa claus because santa claus falls has snow on him and tim allen doesn't isn't his first reaction maybe take off the snow out of this man's face see if he's breathing no he leaves this man covered (laughs) i mean it was the craziest scene dude he's like okay (laughs) he leaves him covered and as they're going to go look at the reindeers, you see the guy going like this. Yeah. Waving by. Right? Dude, I wrote that down immediately. Waving by. Now, that means he was still alive, could have uncovered his face, or 
Or, because there is a part where t- they come back after seeing, seeing the reindeers, they come back and Tim Allen goes, he must be naked. That guy got out undressed and left. Where did he go though? Like, I want to know. Left. And it would have been awesome if they like show somebody later on in this movie and we don't know that there's an Easter egg that the original Santa Claus bounced and he's hanging out. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a bum in town. Maybe he's a homeless guy. Dude, I, I was so baffled by that whole part because I was like, say, okay, say, like, let's table your conspiracy for a minute and just go, let's say <laughs> Santa dies. Does that mean that he just, like, evaporates? Yes. And then goes where? Like, because like, I want to know, dust. does Santa, is Santa immortal? Because, no. but, so does he age? Like, I don't know, because Judy, when we get to the North Pole, I know we're jumping ahead a second. One of those elves, Judy, which freaked me out. Uh, Love Judy. She's twelve hundred years old. Sure. So is she's Santa... seen many. So she's seen many of Santa's. So Santa just dies a lot. He's like a goldfish. Well, yeah, because it's the claws, right? So it says like the guy has to be this until he can't, or like there's there's something else in there at the end, like design. By design yeah, or by definition. By design. So, like, this, maybe this guy was sick of being Santa Claus. But these two people, the kid, Charlie, and Scott Calvin, Tim Allen, are not surprised that a man just fell off their roof and died, let's just say. And they're just like, oh. And then he disappears. And they're like, oh, put on this dead man's clothing, Dad. And then a ladder comes out of nowhere. Let's climb up this ladder now. Dude, they're not so nothing. Nothing is surprising them. I'd be like, okay, okay. And this, and this is where I say like they rushed Tim's like attitude. Yeah. Because like, in the beginning of the movie, which wasn't that long ago, I mean, this, <laughs> it was, it was like shorter than before this or something. It was shorter than this whole length to get to this part in the podcast. That he was a dick. And now all of a sudden he's like, okay, let me f- climb up this ladder just to get this thing. He makes a joke about key lime disease. Did you <laughs> get that? Instead yeah. of Lyme disease, he's like, watch out for the reindeer. They have key lime disease. So like, so, so all these little jokes are happening. The, the son is the most annoying character. So annoying. He stop. He is like Dan? the king of the guilt trip. Damn. Why in this movie? Do they not have one? Why isn't Bernard? Well, yeah, I'm fast forwarding to North Pole at this point. Why isn't Bernard telling him, stop telling people about Santa Claus? <laughs> this like, kid tells everyone that his dad's Santa Claus. There's no Christmas. Like in every Christmas movie, you know, you can't talk about Santa Claus because believing in Santa Claus is what brings you Christmas spirit. Yes, I follow that rule in Jolly Scale. Okay. <laughs> this kid, this kid. <laughs> Over here, telling everybody, but about this, Santa. But he's eight. He's eight years old. Let's say he's eight years old. This kid is is getting. First of all, this kid is getting in trouble for having an imagination. Like he's getting in trouble for pretending. Like yeah, seriously. And they're like, oh God, should he be believing in these things? Like he's eight, bro. What do you want him to do? Like yeah. he believes in Santa. He believes in, like these things. Like it would be like if Calvin and Hobbes, like if like social services came to the parents' house and took the Calvin away because he had like a he had an imaginary friend. Imaginary like, friend. It's like, yeah. all right, we gotta take this like elementary school kid away because you know he uses his imagination. How dare he? Like I know it's crazy. They might as well just held him down and per- like and like you know shoved pills in his mouth. Like I mean, it was crazy, you know. Yeah. But he wouldn't stop talking about it. No, he wouldn't. He just, he was ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Like, Bernard needed to tell him that because he only listened to the elves the whole time. I only listened to Bernard. And Bernard should have been like, Charlie, shut, shut the hell up. <laughs> Charlie is the easiest kid to kidnap, though. Like, they go to the North Pole and Bernard's like, hey, uh, would you like this? Yeah, here, do this. Oh, go with that person. Okay. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> your skepticism like you were such a skeptic outside of the north pole and all of a sudden it's like yeah and the best is like tim allen doesn't believe in it until next thanksgiving which is insane because which is 
crazy. <laughs> How does he explain anything? <laughs> That's why I'm like, they don't bring up that, that he's a dick anymore. He's just kind of this guy walking around who's like, all these changes are happening to him. And yet he doesn't believe it until Charlie gives him the globe. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, yes, I, I, I remember. It's just like, you, and that I had to pause. I was like, wait. For a full year, he didn't know what was happening. I mean, that yeah. can't be true. I mean, that, that came up, and me, me, and my wife were like, "This movie is ridiculous." Like, <laughs> this is, she's like, "Maybe it's not a good movie." Wait, it took him this long. So this whole time, when he's gaining weight, he's trying to shave, trying to dye his hair, yeah. wearing Christmas stuff, talking all this stuff. He still didn't believe, didn't know. Like, yeah. why is wrong this clothing guy? only Christmas clothing? Like, it was so funny that, like, at a certain point, anything he was wearing was just in Christmas colors. I was just like, you could yeah. bet there's no like a there's no big and tall store near you or somewhere. Like, you nah. could just get regular pants. And this or, is like, coming from a man. This is coming from a man who like doesn't know or remember. It's like he was acting like outside of his own brain. Like he was just like on though. autopilot. He kind of was because because I think that out. That yeah. thing that happens at the meeting, he didn't control that. I love that part. But, like, I think, like, when he gets the list, I mean, he can't be, like, it's not like he's, like, what the hell is this? He's just, like, oh, God. Like, he knows sort of what it is. I think he's just in a, such a deep denial that it doesn't, that his brain won't allow him to accept the fact that, like, yeah, bro, you're Santa. This is it. Like, truly, this is it. Like, deal with it but he still didn't he still didn't deal with it until later on yeah i mean he didn't really deal with it and then he's like a hilarious santa so i mean like it's totally ridiculous uh but yeah yeah. so so first of all they go on the on the beginning thing he like you know the reindeer is making him do all these things yeah this is he hasn't even become the like the santa claus that he becomes reindeer fart joke yeah he goes through the whole thing there's kids that are up oh my god that that was that was dude the girl who's up he was such a dick she's okay but it's great because like it does show like the kids that that truly believe they they're just okay like yeah yeah you're santa claus even though like you're not that fat and you yeah. shaved like yeah i i believe it you don't you're not this just creepy guy that's in my house well you know? yeah and because like a fireplace showed up out of nowhere so the kids just like yeah i'm cool with this magic happened. yeah but that magic yeah, an insane amount of magic. Like, and the other thing that was funny is like, I was like, like as they were flying around, I was like, does everyone have a flat roof? Like, because yeah. they were just landing on the roof. But Tim's roof, like Scott Calvin's roof, not flat. That's why Santa died. So, but everyone yes. else's roof, totally flat, like a helipad. Like there was like- flat. <laughs> Which also very not efficient delivery system. That you have to land in every house. <laughs> no. Like what? There should be some neighborhood stops. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or like you just let out a bunch of bags or something. Dude, you gotta watch Christmas Chronicles. I'm gonna have Christmas to watch Chronicles. the Christmas Chronicles. I'm gonna have to updates watch all the things we're talking about. Yeah, Kurt Russell, call us. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a Christmas Chronicles too that came out this year. Oh dear God. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, but not. So. There's no way that he did every house. I mean, there's no way. I mean, he had such trouble with but Tim Allen. Yeah. No, Tim Allen gave up in Chicago. Like when he was <laughs> like, oh, we're going home and take some, what? Did they pass out during the ride because they didn't realize they were going to the North Pole? Yeah, I, I don't like, know how they didn't realize they were going to the North Pole. Which how did they not go be like, yo, Rudolph, I mean, Comet. Yeah. You missed my turn. Yo, where was Rudolph? No. Dude, Rudolph is in, in no movies except Rudolph. Zero. Because I was. If you watch any Christmas movie, I don't think there's that many movies that it's foggy out. So like Rudolph does, <laughs> does it. Rudolph, it wouldn't make for a great film. And Rudolph doesn't really show up anywhere. No. Like they don't even mention like that he's in the stable. No. Just like, like you would think like, oh, they're all getting ready. And like Rudolph's just like, yo guys, see you later. Like I'm still here, but yeah. you know, if you need me. No. No, he only in the Rudolph movie, which is yeah. creepy as hell. Oh, the, that's the, a creepy the, dark. Oh, movie. that claymation thing. Yes. Yeah, I, that uh, it, we. Oh, well, that and the, the Frosty the Snowman uh, cartoon movie. Did you ever watch yes, that, dude? First of all, Frosty, those movies are like terrifying. 
Those like you're watching are meant a, to scare kids to like be good. Yeah, you're watching a frozen man melt to death. Like it's just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but anyway, like so yeah, they go to the, <clears throat> to the North Pole. Excuse me. It looks like a totally different planet. Yes. I was just like, what the fuck is this? And then that one elf walks out. First of all, they should. No one's cold in this movie. No one. Well, is he cold. the elf. The elf's hands a little cold. She, he had gloves on, and he's like rubbing her the hands when he yeah. touches the North Pole. Yeah, That's we have it. the North Pole, which is like a garage door opener. Yes. <laughs> which I think is outdated. That thing should just automatically open when you when the the sleigh yeah. is pulling up. Who wants to be out out in the cold like that? Like is there's that no that... dome. No. There's no dome over the sled. Is How that is that... his face not frozen? No. Frozen. Is that that uh, elf's job? That's a, the elf's one job. To walk out and just do that? Because that's crazy. And That means he only does it one. He only does it twice. Yeah, exactly. He does it to open it. Yeah. And he does it to close, close it. it. Yeah, that's it. And he stands out there. That's it. Because he only does it once a year. Yeah. Because Santa Claus is not going out with his sleigh any other time. Not at all. And then what was funny is when they pulled up and then the uh, the reindeer leave, they don't do anything. They just sit there. And I'm like, so is the point here that like Scott Calvin is like, all right, Charlie, I guess we're going to freeze to death now. Because yeah. <laughs> Like this should yeah. this movie should have turned into a horror movie. Like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, that's like, it. We're, that we're was dead. fun. Yeah. We're dead. Yeah, we're dead. You remember you ever see Star Wars at that ice planet? That's what we're on. It's over. Yeah. If, if we don't find an animal to cut open and like sleep inside of, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So now they go down. Oh boy. And they're in the like, you know, toy shop of a, of amazingness. Which is really just a sweat sh- a sweatshop of dude, where, dude. There's some child people, labor laws problems. Forget about child labor laws. They're not children. They're elves. Okay. Okay. And even if they are, yeah. Do they just enjoy working? Do elves ever get a time off? Well, according because Bernard to Bernard does not. You know, he was like, "We only have one year to do this." Like, they just finished Christmas. Yeah. And they're getting ready. Yeah. For Christmas next year. It's like Elf. Remember like in, in Elf when like Christmas is over? It's like, all right, 365 more to four days till Christmas. Man. And they start yeah. making Etch-a-Sketches. No one wants an Etch-a-Sketch. But like they start making. <laughs> and this is the thing about like movies like this. When they show the toy shop, they're not making any toys that anyone wants. Christmas Chronicles. I knew you were going to say that. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> Christmas Chronicles. But uh, this stuff yeah. updates everything that we need to know about the North Pole. <laughs> but everything we need to know about the North Pole, Christmas Chronicles. This is not a this is not a plug for the Christmas Chronicles. We're not being paid by Christmas Chronicles. We're not. <laughs> but next week we are having Kurt Russell on. No, but we're not. But uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, th- this is a sweatshop. It's a total. It's a sweatshop, and Tim Allen and Bernard. Is Holy Bernard shit. Bernard is disguised. Why he's is he? not an elf. That no. man is not an elf. No. And he's disguised and he's making all these people work. Yeah, he's pissed off all the time. All the time. He's the guy and for why numbers. Is he so nonchalant about this, as if Scott is supposed to know this stuff. He's just like, you put on the suit. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. it. That's it. Excuse didn't you, me? Didn't you read the uh, fine print on the business card while you were in your underwear outside freezing your ass off? Didn't you have a magnifying and glass to read it? He didn't want to. Dude, they didn't seem to care that that guy died. <laughs> that the the only, <laughs> the none of them were no like. funeral. <laughs> There's no pictures of the guy. They only answer to Santa Claus. Yeah, this is cult. a cult. This is a cult. They don't care who's in the suit. No. They just want the suit. They just see the suit. And that was the funny thing. Like, when he came down, they were all just like, yeah, there's Santa. It's just like, bro, didn't yeah. you see Santa leave? Like, yeah. that wasn't Santa. No. Like, that wasn't Santa. They were, like, totally fine with the fact that the guy fell. Like, hey, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Like, Santa dies. The, dude, Scott could have been like, does this happen every year? <laughs> that would have been my first question. And then my second question would be like, so when I die, why do I disappear? Where do I go? 
Like, what do I go back to my normal life? Like, what happens here? Do you go into a painting? <laughs> you go into a painting like, like in, in the witches? witches, dude. Yeah. What happens if you di- like? Let's say Scott didn't make it past Chicago because yeah. he's froze to death or fell off the sleigh because no one's teaching this guy what to do. There's no doors. It's not like a like a closed like fucking vehicle. He should have frozen. Down. Okay. He wasn't even wearing so he a hat. Dies. He dies in the next person. Like, has there been a time where there's been five Santa Clauses in one Christmas because so many of them die and they can't handle the pressure of being Santa Claus? Well, plus, if you're going to a house and someone hears you, you don't think Santa gets shot? I mean, like, there's got to be multiple Santas in one night. At this point, like, this is that what this movie is telling me, that there's multiple Santas in a single night and that the elves are in a cult. They don't care. It's like the cult of the red suit. They don't give a shit about who's in the suit. That's it. They see the suit and they're like, oh, Santa's back. It's like, that, dude, that is just some guy who put on clothing. <laughs> that was the guy that, that was the last, yeah. That was a home, like, it could have been a person who was just looking for clothing. Yeah, literally. It could have been just some dude be like, oh, a jacket and pants. And then it's he's Santa. Yeah. But yeah. what if he doesn't go up there? What if he just takes the pants and the suit and just walks away? So this is what I think happens. Because this is this explains Scott's like cavalier like autopilot. I think <laughs> the magic of the suit slowly transforms uh, you. And as soon as you touch the suit, you've now your fate has gone towards that, and you start to believe, and without knowing, you go into autopilot mode of becoming Santa Claus. Uh, you've now because. Because, yo, he got in, he was kind of okay with being going, like, it's almost like it felt natural to him to be at the North Pole. It was magic. So you're saying, you're saying that the suit takes over your choices, and while you're trying to not do it, you still are doing it. Yeah, because it's slowly, it's slowly changing your brain, or in your, Mm. and like, it's slowly making you do things. Like the symbiote in like uh, Spider Man two, like 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 Venom and like Venom from Spider Man, like that yeah. alien symbiote, <laughs> basically a- taking over. Wow, it's a parasite. So the suit injects a parasite <laughs> into you. We are changing the entire narrative. Of- you become, you become overweight. You <laughs> age very quickly. Yes, yes. And you don't know what's happening. Yet you're trying just to be you while yeah. this is symbiote is transforming your life. Yeah, because it changes your heartbeat. I mean, his heartbeat, when the doctor listened to it, was a jingle bell. <laughs> so, yeah, it is like a parasite. Like, that Santa Belly. parasite is, like, in- infecting your body. And also, he knows every kid's name, every person's name. Like, he's walking down the street. I mean, we're fast forward. But he's walking down the street, and he's like, uh, Annie, good. First of all, what was happening to Annie? Like, her mom was wiping her face, but for days, she was just like, girl, something's on your face. Like, But, like, then the kid... Uh, they, <laughs> they shot that scene way too long. Just the extra was you, like, uh, you just, like, wiping something? And I don't know what I'm doing. She was erasing a chalkboard. Like, like, and trying to like rub that kid's nose off. Yeah, and it's like he knows everyone's name, and he knows the woman's name, Veronica or whatever. It's like Veronica, real good, yeah, creepy. And then Veronica and turns out like, in your dreams, Playboy. Like, no, she says in your dreams, Slave Boy. Oh, Slave Boy, dude. People, I could not hear some of the words. I think the the sound mix in this was all messed up. But in I your dreams, Slave Boy. But she didn't. She was kind of like into it because she smiled at him so not a good lesson for people <laughs> not a good lesson <laughs> not a good lesson do not say shit like that to random women on the street how is see that's one thing thinking it, it like slowly takes over you because yeah. scott's like still trying like he goes into work oh best yeah he gains all this weight he orders all these treats mm. he he like goes into like will farrell's old school blackout debate mode where like he stands yeah. up and he's like mm-hmm. debating this guy about you know the total tank and all this stuff and he's like oh, I don't know what happened to me in there like all of a sudden he's in a dick but yeah but it's, it's not so really funny. he's not really embracing it because he's like I'm not really sure what's going on here like he has no idea he still isn't he got the list he's still not 
like, oh yeah, I'm turning to Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's funny? Like, if we go back again, <laughs> when he's at the North Pole, his bedroom creeped me out. That Santa's bedroom's got a puppet show going at the same time. Yeah, what is up with that? And then he gets into a sleigh bed with his kid, and they. Th- to me, and when that happened, I was like, oh, the movie's over. Yeah, it seemed like the end of the movie. I was just like, oh, the movie's done. Right, like twenty minutes. That was it. We're done. Yeah, they wake up the next day. Charlie's saying how he had had a blast. Scott Calvin's got these pajamas on all of a sudden, um, <laughs> and they go to they're they're at the school. Oh my god! And the kid starts talking about how his dad Santa Claus. Yeah, I again, the guy rules before. needed to. Oh yeah, the guy before the fire. The <laughs> Third fire degree department. burns. Holy burns are terrible. But see, that's what I mean. This movie is legitimately funny. And I that's why like I still don't get why people don't talk about this movie, this Christmas movie more often. It was legitimately Oh funny. yeah, that kid, the 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 redhead kid who's like uh so all I gotta do is uh kill you yeah. and I become Santa. And I'm like, <laughs> boom, he just said the movie. He just basically yeah. said it what goes on. But it that's was great. Just- that's just weird. At the end of the movie, spoilers, where Charlie goes, I want to go into the family business. And in my head, I'm like, so he's got to kill his dad. Yeah. <laughs> like this like dad. Highlander. Like, was he going to tell you, like, there could be only one Santa. And then he pushes his that's... dad off a roof and <laughs> takes his pants. That's right. And also Judge Reinhold's sweater again. Oh, dude. The sweaters are just... Did he pick out the sweaters? I hope he picked I mean, out they the make sweaters. fun of the sweater. Yeah. One of the sweaters. Yeah, he was trying to give tell tell some sense to Charlie that there's just no way that one person could like travel around the world. Yeah, and Charlie's answer was like, "Well, not everybody celebrates Christmas." Yeah, amazing. Yeah, they think it is like a time continuum, probably. Yeah, <laughs> time continuum. you're eight, bro. Time again, continuum. again, they they sent him back the next day from the, the North Pole way too soon. Yeah, there's like no there needed break. to be. At least two weeks. You're gonna not go to work. You're gonna be a missing person for a while because yeah. we need to like go over your stuff. And yeah. why does he go back? Again, goes back to this is a cult that only cares about the red jacket, that only cares about getting rid of the toys they're making so they can make more because they're addicted to making toys. Because yes. they're like, You're due back at Thanksgiving. At Thanksgiving. Like so Thanksgiving. they run the North Pole. So yeah. it's not Santa Claus's world. It's the elves' world. It's Bernard's. It's definitely Bernard's world, and I and he's the boss. And Santa is just a pawn in Bernard's like game of yeah. cult game. What's funny that you said that though too. The other thing about the toys, but also about the um, oh, like they're trying to continually convince Charlie that he can't have an imagination, and Charlie keeps arguing with them like it's fine. It's okay. Like, I loved his answer when he's like, well, Neil, have you ever seen a million dollars? He's like, no. He's like, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And I was like, boom. boom. <laughs> I was like, can you go, Neil? Like, come on, Judge Reinhold. Like, shut your mouth. Like, they continually try to convince this kid that he can't play pretend. Now, no. that's just messed up. You know, I think there are, like, more fart jokes, I think, at this point, too. Like, I mean, Tim Allen wakes up, there's another fart joke. When he keeps getting fatter, he just starts to get fat. And dude, this was one of my favorite scenes though, that boardroom scene when he comes in in sweatpants and a sweatshirt. <laughs> it's like I got stung by a bee. <laughs> got stung by a bee. And then he starts, he like orders a salad and the rest of it is just like creme brulee, Sunday, like every sweet known to man, a whole tray of cookies. Yeah, he's like, oh, good, cho- an extra chocolate sauce. He's like, uh, on the side. On the side. <laughs> But the weird thing is they watched him eat every single item of food and then they started the meeting. The best part of this editing was that they like amplified the the chewing or the licking of the spoon and like the clinging of the spoon against the glass. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. it was just like gross. <laughs> and like they're just like watching him, like, who watches somebody eat like that? Oh, dude, exactly. And I and think, like yeah. No, it, they had to go into the storyboard because in the 90s, every corporate like scene involved the storyboard. 
and one of the shittiest storyboards I've ever seen. It was like an eight by ten picture. Oh, dude, it's a terrible storyboard. <laughs> you didn't even see what was going on. No. Like they, this was just for the joke of like him standing up and like going into blackout mode about talking about. You know, he yeah. still doesn't believe he's Santa Claus. No, no. This is still in the beginning. Like we're we're in the typical fashion of this podcast. We're back to him just being overweight. He hasn't even grown a beard. He hasn't grown a beard yet. He just started getting fat and he is lo- I think one of my favorite parts about this scene though is when like they say is we're going to talk, you know, Santa Claus and then he starts getting excited. He's like, "Yeah." And he does this thing like it's like he knows he's Santa but like what you're saying is like the Santa parasite that has inv- invaded him is making yeah. him enjoy this moment. Yeah. And then he totally freaks out about like Santa in the tank, which is it's, it's so funny. It's like, yeah, that's what that's what the kids want to see. They want to open the window and see Santa rolling down their street in the tank. Like, it's like, dude, he's right. He's right on. Exactly. Like, that's exactly it. Uh, but Santa, yeah, he's like, where are the reindeers? You know, where are the reindeer? Um, you know, the tanks they like, break. Santa is super anti-capitalist. Um, that's one thing I realized because he's like, we can't make toys that break, you know, and I'm just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Go that was the point. And he's like, no, we have to make them inexpensive and we have to m- make them nourishing for the child for for life. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So th- then he goes out and he totally was like, I don't know what just happened in there. Like, that's what I'm saying. This thing was slowly taking him over. Ah, so he's slow because. I think what's funny is like if I'm thinking of what Bernard said to him, like go back, you know, get your affairs in order and be back here yes. after Thanksgiving. And I'm like, now after what you're saying is like, it's not that he's getting a mind wipe. Like he does know who these people are, but yeah. his old life is over. Like, it's you know over. what I mean? Like, and in, in some ways he is <laughs> some people dying because he's never going to show up again. No, because like he's gonna. So you didn't watch two and three, but in some ways, like he's gonna have to live at the North Pole. Yeah. Like, because what is he gonna do for work? He can't <laughs> afford to be at that house. No, 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 no. He has to stay at the North Pole. But then he's gonna be like useless at the North Pole. Well, that's what I don't understand. Like, a part of me was like, so does it? Does he get skinny again and go back home and then get fat again over time to go back to being Santa? But then I'm like, that would be a weird existence. Like every year, like you lose weight, you come back, then you put the weight back on. I mean, it would be like insane to like exist in that way. We're two grown men talking about Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I'm in the jolly scale right now. Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, man. You got him. So yeah. I don't even know where we're at here. He, yeah. Oh, he's in the park. So he sits in the park. His weird. beard is now... Mr. Almost Santa Claus. Yeah. And then like this child comes over to him. So back to me saying like magic is starting to take over. Yeah. The, the kids believe. They don't yeah. need to ask any questions. None. None they whatsoever. Just know. Yeah. They just know. Worst soccer game going on at all time. The whole <laughs> time. Everyone's just following the ball. It's terrible. <laughs> mom, mom and Neil both dressed in mom pants <laughs> and i mean both of them are dressed in mom pants and tucked in shirts <laughs> are watching this where there's a lineup of kids sitting on this guy's lap and he just goes with it again autopilot mode he still yeah. does not dan we are only we're still at the part where he has not accepted that no. he's santa claus but he's allowing he's children. okay with it. Yeah, he's allowing children to sit on his lap in public. Feels all right. It feels right to him. And it's so weird. And and the thing is, like, what's funny is the reaction that Neil and the mom have. They are reacting like he is like trying to murder people. And then what's funny is Charlie. They take. Charlie it's one of my favorite scenes. They go, we're leaving, right? They're like, yeah. you're sick. Like, I can't believe you would take it this far to do, like, to say you're Santa Claus, to, and blah, blah, blah. And then, to have your kid love you. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they take Charlie, and Charlie's like, Mom, the game just started. It's like, we're leaving. And they walk straight through 
a game the that's game. going on. I'm just like, this poor kid is just trying to play soccer. He's trying to have a childhood. And they're like, no, we have to, we got to get, just take him away from. Uh, not, no one else is reacting to to Scott, by the way. No one. No one. No one. Dangerous. No one has stopped. Yeah. None of the parents are like. None no. of the parents of these kids are like. I don't think these kids have weird. parents. I, I don't know where their parents are. There was a ton. Of where them. are they? Who there was knows? a lot. Yeah, it was really was that lot. was weird. I was like, why? Is, how did this line of kids come about, and where are the parents? But yeah, no one's afraid of him. No one's freaked out. He had a little episode at work, whatever. He could deal with that. And then like his but his wife and his like and the stepdad are the ones overreacting, totally overreacting in this whole thing. No, they're terrible people. Horrible. Okay. So then the next scene <laughs> oh, yeah. is them is them at the courthouse, right? <laughs> Dude, the craziest thing. This is great. This scene is fantastic. They let the, they, go ahead. Go okay, ahead, go, so go. and if you realize this, now that you're now that I'm like realizing his his chain of clothing, Scott's chain of clothing is getting more and more Christmas themed. Yeah. Right? But hasn't been taken over yet totally. No, not totally yet. Because in this scene, it's like a but a button-down shirt with a tie that's very Christmassy. Yeah. So it hasn't gotten into the like yeah. sweater whatever whatever so he hasn't the parasite hasn't totally hit him right this is where i hate charlie the most oh, charlie God. but but see like you're right about this like i hate charlie but i also hate the parents on it like i oh, mostly like, hate the parents on this because the yeah, kid's yeah. not even let's say this wasn't true that is his dad santa claus like the kid's just having a like an imagination He's not hurting. None of this is hurting anybody. No one is getting hurt. There, the stakes are not. The, the stakes in this movie aren't too hot. Aren't high enough with the kid. Like he's not in danger. This literally has everything to do with the mom and the stepdad hating Scott. And, That's it. No, and hating Santa Claus. Hating because Santa you Claus hear all. it in this scene. Dude. Okay, she is all upset because at around her son's age, she stopped believing in Santa Claus because she didn't get whatever. Mystery day. And then he, and he had three. <laughs> this was some serious psychiatrist moment right here. Unreal, yeah. He's telling a story that he stopped believing in Santa Claus at three years old because he didn't get a whistle. And I was like, you know why you didn't get it? Because you were probably not nice. Exactly. You're probably naughty, Neil. None of, like, in those two monologues, there was not one thought that maybe that year they were both naughty and they didn't get those, didn't get those gifts because they were crappy. Instead, they were yeah. like, I don't believe in Santa now uh, because I didn't get those gifts. You know, plenty of times where I didn't get gifts that I wanted when I believed in Santa. And guess what? I didn't go, there's no Santa because I was like, holy crap, there's a ton of other gifts I got. And yeah. The other thing about believing in Santa is just like this reminded me a lot about how like my dad like was so into the idea of like believing in Santa like us that he would when we lived in and yeah, I was living in Queens in Ozone Park like my bedroom was on the bottom floor and the yard facing the yard so when on Christmas my dad had these sleigh bells and at night he would walk out there and like ring them no. like so yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> And I would get up so and crazy. I would tell them in the morning, be like, I heard the bells. I heard these, uh, the sleigh bells, like, and that stuff. And so it was fun. Your dad was, played that, like, yeah. went through it. Wow. Yeah, he walked outside wow. with these bells and he'd, like, shake them, like, slightly to kind of yeah. make the noise. And there was always a letter and, like, there's all those, you know, they would, like, all oh, the cookies and stuff. We'd leave a carrot for, like, Rudolph or whatever the hell. Yeah. You know? yeah. The hell with the other reindeer. Just that one reindeer. Yeah, yeah. Or Comet. in this case, Comet. So it was funny to like think of that in my childhood and how the encouragement to believe in Santa versus this kid, the encouragement to just like grow up. You're eight, bro. Yeah. Like, and so, you know, it was really such weird. But back to this scene though, but back to one thing I do want to say, there's so many, mo there are monologues in Christmas films that are just fucking depressing. Like, this reminded me of the Gremlins monologue. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
I was like, what is with these movies and these monologues? Like, I, I just could not believe it. I was just like, what is happening here? All right, so we're in the judges' room, and this is why Charlie's annoying, uh, because Scott Calvin, has, his dad, has already had a talk with him about keeping the Santa stuff to himself, and that's their secret. He told him five five bucks he was going to give him. He, yeah, you he know what? Charlie would have listened to Bernard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, this shows how innocent this kid is. He's eight, probably. He's eight years old. He's like, yeah, they want to. They want me to tell him everything. I'm telling you, like, dad, because he like he truly doesn't believe that he did anything wrong. He was like, yeah, dad, I told him everything about yeah. you in the North Pole. And then this man's visitation rights gets taken from him for for what? Like I there are movies. It's I've Neil's seen. plan. Oh, this is Neil's God. plan. Neil is a creep, and he needs to be dealt with because, like, I, I was just like, "What is he trying to do?" And this is that's some horror movie bullshit. Like, you know, like weird. Like, I'm taking your family. Then he, the next scene is he's walking down the street in more Christmassy clothing. Now this is, dude. This is when it's almost <laughs> the final push. A it's full like... parasite, magical Santa Claus takeover. <laughs> he's no longer. He's almost not Scott Cal Scott Calvin at this. Oh point. no! Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be Santa Claus. Okay, he <laughs> is dressed <laughs> in like he makes fun of Neil's sweater. This sweater takes Neil's sweater and makes oh. it, kicks its ass. That totally okay? does. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Christmassy Christmas of sweaters, Unreal. and it's a button down. And it's a button one. That's great. Button ones, button button Christmas sweaters, yeah. or even the, the buttons <laughs> hang. It's a very awkward thing. Button yeah. sweaters, man. Yeah. They're they're it's, tough. They're tough. If I if I saw this man walking down the street, I'd be like, that's that Santa Claus. Like you're not yeah. trying to hide. No. Like you're not. You're a no. magical being at this point. Like you are a magical being. It would be like the Easter Bunny walking down the street, being like, "Hey, how you doing? Uh, just getting my newspaper." Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And it's Thanksgiving, you know. It's like, oh, yeah, he's getting ready to go to North Pole. Yeah, yeah. Like, is it? Is that cool. what it is? It's Thanksgiving. Yeah. So that's because Bernard comes to get him. Whoa! Says you're back. Whoa! 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 Thanksgiving. Whoa! Whoa! That changes everything. Why? That's it's been a year. It's almost been a year. But okay. But wait, wait a second. <laughs> Charlie leaves with him. That means he was missing for like a month? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. He kidnaps Charlie. This oh is the best part. God. This part of the movie, the fact that this is only like, I this totally, is really towards the end of the movie too. Right? I totally didn't realize that. That's why his mom yeah. was so distraught. Yeah, because dude. He was missing it for a month. It wasn't Christmas Eve. I thought it, it was wasn't cool. Christmas oh, Eve. God, oh my because, God. Because Bernard grabs the turkey. That's and he's cool. like, oh, you guys don't believe in basting? I, I couldn't the, hear some of these words. So the best part about this is, first of all, they don't have a big family. Because it's only oh. Neil and the mother all the They're time. They're like no cousins. It's not the best part. But there's never any more people in this no. movie. It's just them. And then, you know, he's going there to see him one last time. Like, on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Neil and the mother are stone cold like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're never seeing him again. You're never seeing him again. For you just time. showed up in a yeah. Christmas sweater. The most. How did Neil not go? You're fucking Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. How did he not do that? And how is he? The, you're not seeing him again. Um, you've never hit him. You've never um, neglected him. I mean, you were, you know, pretty shitty dad. But whatever. I mean, you're not that. You were shitty. a shitty dad for like the first ten minutes of this movie. Yeah, and and uh, you've, you know, obviously given him some sort of a life. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Now you can't see him because he loves you. <laughs> like yeah. literally what he loves you happening. so much oh uh, he loves you so, so much so then charlie gives him the globe after having the globe for over 10 months gives yeah. him the globe and only now mm -hmm. does scott believe that he's santa claus it, it, <sighs> oh and charlie has a crazy encounter with neil oh my god i thought oh this my was, god this was radio flyer level like i thought it was getting to that point Dude, if Radio Flyer's father was there, oh, it would be a totally different movie. Charlie would have been on a. He was hey, he was on the sled. He got out. He yeah. got out, dude. 
when he screamed at him, I was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. That was and crazy. But, but you know what? Charlie gave it to him. He gave it to him. Neil, you deserved it. That Sorry, mom. but you deserve this one. And the mom, so mean, she, she was flip-flopping both ways. Yeah. Come on. Because then she was like, oh, Scott. And then she's like, Charlie? Charlie! When she yeah. goes outside. Oh, my Terrible. God. Terrible. Yeah. But, so, oh, so, so he kidnaps his son. For a month. I totally did not. Because the way it looks, like when they cut everything together in the film, I was like, it didn't make, I guess time didn't really make sense in that moment for me. I just like, I thought it was already that night. No. So Charlie goes back to help the elves with all the new inventions to help her, his dad not die. Yeah. Apparently, like Charlie thinks about this and is like, yeah, you need okay. to be fireproof. You need to do this. So apparently it took over 1200 years and nobody's ever improved on Santa Claus's things. No. Apparently Charlie is an engineer. Uh, he's a genius level physicist. Like, yes. I mean, how, he's like, he's helping the elves. They're like, oh, he's so great. Like he's, t- he's helping us do things. We never thought, we never thought, because I'm like, he's eight. Like what's yeah. happening here? Like they lost their imagination, Dan. They've <laughs> only been making the same rocking stuffed horse. doll <laughs> yeah. and the rocking horse. That's it. Rocking horse, stuffed doll, etch a sketch. Oh, rocking God, horse, stuffed doll, so etch a sketch. That is so funny. Holy shit. Yeah, so he does. They don't care if he falls off the roof. No, Even they don't. Like they invented. First of all, can we just talk about how the fact? We'll we'll bring that back up. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna hold on to this. So what happens next? I'm trying to remember. So they. So now, like he's going around giving gifts. Now he hasn't been caught yet. Santa Slay should be a bubble, like yeah, kind of know. like the Pope's. The Pope's like cart. Yeah. Why isn't there a cover? Him? I don't like, know. Anyway, so they go to the house. The first house they go to is that little girl. He uh, leaves the the toys. He's not an asshole anymore because uh, the parrot, the Santa Claus parasite, has taken over totally uh, his totally. entire body. And um, except he's still lactose intolerant. Oh my god, that was so funny because like he obviously wasn't, and he drank this soy milk, and I was just like, oh my god, that was so that that was a cute <laughs> that was a cute callback. I'll say. That yeah, was that was. Back. That was nice. That was good. <laughs> oh, we, He's we, like, yeah, go ahead. Something's wrong with your milk. And she's like, oh, no, it's soy milk because you said you were lactose intolerant. <laughs> I love it. I want to imagine her parents being like, like, she's like, we have to buy soy milk. Now, this is 1994. There's no like coconut milk, I think, at that point, or almond milk, oat milk, all this like milk that you can choose from now. Macadamia nut, no. Yeah, there's no macadamia milk uh, as well. But you could imagine her mom, like the parents like going, what? Like, yeah, Santa's <laughs> lactose intolerant. He told me last year. <laughs> I got to leave soy milk covered. <laughs> and then they're, they're sitting there going like, we have all this soy milk now. I, I don't even want to imagine what soy milk t- tasted like in 94. Oh, just like Tim Allen's reaction. He basically I, said it was sour milk. Yeah, it had to have been gross. So this part was great. And then what do they, they trap him, right? Because yeah. he gets caught in his own Charlie's house. house. Why would you go to his house? First of all, why is Charlie going with him? I don't know. Santa Claus should be by himself. Yeah. Charlie's going with him because he's planning on killing his father to take over the family. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> I just like, no. didn't understand why he had to go back to his house. Why? To leave gifts? He didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. Like Charlie's gift. gift should be the fact that he gets to travel around with Santa Claus. Yeah, your dad is Santa. That's the gift. You get no more gifts. It's over. Gifts are no, done for you. Like you go and sleep in the North Pole. You have gifts everywhere. You could play with everything. That's your gift. I don't know why he had to, in the pattern of giving gifts that night, go, all right, got to stop at my ex-wife's house. It's like, no, bro, that's a trap. You've kidnapped your child. He's been yeah. missing for a month. And you're gonna Month. go back to the scene of the crime? Good job. And he gets arrested. And why was it? Why was Charlie upstairs? He was upstairs or on the roof. I thought he was on the roof. And then Charlie comes down, right? They see him. No, he. They still don't no, know where he is. No, they don't because they this they they end up oh, getting the right. the elf squad. 
dude, that was hilarious. But before that, why are these parents taking their kids outside to watch Santa get arrested? Like, it was just so weird to see, like, all right, there's some stuff happening. It's Christmas Eve. All right, kids, get up. Put your shoes on. We're going outside. That girl's jacket, though. Oh, my God. Whoa. There was a lot happening with that girl's jacket. There's some things in the 90s I don't miss. Some jacket. That jacket. girl's jacket is if you walked into, like, Michael's craft store <laughs> and you had glue on your jacket and you just <laughs> landed on things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you dude. came out and you're like, this is my jacket. Oh, <laughs> what God. the hell is that hell jacket? Is so they get the elf patrol. Yeah. Right? Elves with attitude. The elves can fly with this jetpack. Yeah, jetpacks, yeah. Why don't you give that jetpack to Santa Claus so that if he falls off the roof, he can just fly like the Rocketeer? That's called logic, Manny. And the thing is, there is no logic in these movies. They could give Santa Claus some sort of rocket-propelled, like, pack or boots or something to ensure that he doesn't fall. Or, since everything is magic... Why can't he just float to the ground? Like, I, I don't understand what Santa is. Like, is he an elf? Is he magical? Um, he obviously can't get diabetes. So, obviously, he's some sort of, like, weird, like, you know, magical being. Um, yeah, so if he falls off the roof, he shouldn't die right away. No, he shouldn't die right away. But, of course, he doesn't because he waved goodbye to that other Santa. So, again, I'm trying to figure out where does this body go? What happens if it's your choice? And you can say, I'm done. And that's why he became mortal. And his parasite left him for the moment. And was like, all right, fine. And he, then he died. Because he let himself go. That's what I'm telling you. That, that there's going to be, there's got to be a story out there. That the, the Santa Claus is somewhere in town. The guy who ran and walked off. Yeah. I want to see a movie about that guy. We need to write a script of like right. Santa Claus after... You know, yeah. and, and him leaving like naked yeah. throughout the town. <laughs> I'm I gonna start a Google Doc right now. <laughs> Imagine in the jail where Scott Calvin is. Oh, guy sitting next to him was is the guy. guy who was flashing everyone because he was naked. Oh, so maybe that guy was Santa Claus in the beginning of the film. He got arrested for indecent exposure, but then he'd be in yes. jail for a year. Sure, they don't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. Well, it's like he's a small just... town jail. There's like three jail cells. No, but I'm saying he doesn't know where he is, so he couldn't get he couldn't get released. Oh, uh, so he just stays there. It was nice to see a cop that wasn't drunk finally in a movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's because this wasn't a horror film. <laughs> but he was stuffing his face with donuts, which I mean, come on. Yeah, L's with attitude. This is a great scene. I like, I like this part. Again, uh, Charlie gets kidnapped by elves now. He, he is the war. He is this the guy war. just goes with it. He, he just, is no. like, he, yeah, he just goes with the flow. Like Charlie's just like, yeah, oh, I've never seen these people before. Let's I'm not going to tell mom that I'm here, that I'm okay, because mom's still panicking. And no one is, no one hides what they are. The elves fly over that police car. They're like, hey, and then they stop and they turn yes. around and wave to him and wave. Like, what? Uh, there are no secrets in this movie, Dan. Zero. No secrets. Yeah, no, 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 no secrets. It, it was ridiculous. Not, not like Elf, where like Christmas spirit was to believe, and you didn't want to be seen. That's right. You know, this you got to follow that rule. Yeah. My jolly scale, you follow this rule. This is why this movie isn't exactly to the T of Christmas movies. Mm. In this movie, elves don't care. No, nobody no. cares. Nobody cares. But anyway, like, you know, just to get back, like the elves come in there, they tie up the cop, and then they <laughs> they break Santa out with a piece of tinsel. Love that. I mean, they cut the tinsel. But, yeah, great. This is, but this is, again, if you have magical tinsel, then there's got to be other stuff that you could do to make sure Santa doesn't die from falling off a roof. Again, that guy died by choice. So he just... Or he's not dead. He, he just killed himself. Like, when you tell yourself, I'm done. Oh, then, like, see, all your magical powers go away. Uh, it's fate that. Mm -hmm, so I think like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was all planned. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So he escapes. Doesn't he bring Charlie back then to the house at that point? Yeah. So Charlie goes back to the house. 
he returns them. They finally believe him because, like, because he shows them that he's floating. I don't, it's, I don't know. But uh, the other thing is, I go, I, where were the reindeer after he got arrested? They were waiting at the house. So they were on the roof? Because I didn't see them. They were there. That's where Charlie was. He was just by the reindeer. He was waiting by the sleigh. Okay, okay. All right. Well, okay. So so he goes back. <laughs> we I can't believe we're just retaining this long to analyze a movie called Santa Claus. <laughs> dude, I listened back on our episodes and I edit and I'm like, dude, we went we like <laughs> like the depth that we go. Uh but yeah, so, so I'm yeah. I'm rewatching the last part of the scene, right? They right. break him out. The next scene is like him returning Charlie to yeah. the house. Why Neil is he comes getting rearrested? There should be other cops. Why aren't there more cops there? The kid is still. I don't know. Missing. Somebody should be arresting these two parents for wearing the sweaters that they were wearing, they were oh wearing God, at the end of this movie. More sweaters, man. Just more sweaters. Like, I, I can't even know how they found all these sweaters. Yeah. You know, and then Neil's looking for Bernard. He oh finally gets God. his whistle, right? Dude. They're about to, go, they're about to, you know, the cops are coming. They're all outside. And the mom it looks at him and she goes, Santa Claus? I'm like, okay. Now they're seeing this guy as Santa Claus. He's been in front of you for a year, but also you've all hated him for how long? And all of a sudden, just because now he's Santa, everyone's like, loves this guy. All like, of a sudden he made up for everything? Yeah, he gave you a board game that's been outdated for decades. And he gives the other guy this small, stupid, plastic, stupid ass whistle. And all of a sudden he's just like, hey, Santa. I'm like, this is, the, this is what you were waiting for? This whistle. Did you notice that some of the kids were the elves and they run yeah, away at the end? That was creepy. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure he was okay. Yeah. Because, like, you know, they're all dressed like regular kids and then they leave. And yeah. now everyone sees Santa Claus. Exactly. And they know it's Scott Calvin. Now you know they're going to go to – that's just why, dude, his life is over. He can't go to his house. No, he's he popular can't. now. Yeah. People are going to be stopping by there. Yeah. Yeah. Or kidnapping him. I forget what the second one, second one was about. I but, forget what happens. But the other thing is everyone knows that he's Santa and everyone knows that Charlie is the son of Santa Claus now. He is a target for ransom. He is a target for kidnappers. Like they need to go into witness protection immediately. Like immediately. Dude, stuff happens. Kinda, <laughs> it, gets, it gets a little dark in the third one. Really? Tell you that much. This that time travel happens. Yeah, Why I remember is there it was like time travel in the third. There's one? a there's a guy. I I would call him Mister Freeze, basically. Yeah, he, Martin Short. So right? like, yeah, he goes back into the time before Tim Allen puts on the the suit, and he puts on the suit. Oh, wow! So it's... then you see that then you see what life would look like when Scott Calvin wasn't. Oh, like, dude, that's a real, uh, that's like a, it's a wonderful life or even like back to the future two and back to the future three, like, well, not three back to the future two. That's interesting. Yeah. And look, mom just lets him go, you know, just like that. Yeah. 10 minutes. He should have just taken Charlie He should the whole time. Him. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he should have been like, guys, I'm Santa Claus. You're never going to stack up to me. Like I win. Best parent of the year. Best parent of the year. Yeah, he's coming to visit. Okay. He's coming to live with me. Like, what can you? Uh, what can you even provide him that I can't? I am Santa. Yeah. Like you I are. I get him Neil. everything he wants. Yeah, you're like, Neil and whatever the mom's name is, which I don't know, and the, I'm Santa. Yeah, I win everything. I win. <laughs> it should have been the end. Like he just takes me. He's like. Peace, I'm out. Like, you can't come to the North Pole. Thanks for custody, bitch. Yeah, she burns That's the it. custody papers. That was the best part. I love that thing. Um, dude, just to like, just so everyone knows, like, that this movie, the first movie was budgeted at $22 million and it made $190.5 million. So this movie was a gigantic hit, right? Part two was budgeted for $65 million. It got a bigger budget. And that came out in 2002, and that made $172.9 million. Now, that was a hit. In the third one, released in 2006, 
the budget was only twelve million dollars, and yeah. it made a hundred and ten point eight million. So it was still a huge hit. Like, dude, they're all hits. Unbelievable. They're all hits. I mean, dude, this is. I'm like, I'm telling you, if you get a good hit that's fairly decent, B minus, C pluses during the Christmas season, people will watch it or listen to it. Even like in the episodes that we do about the Christmas songs, like that is a perfect way to constantly get hits because people want to feel jolly, bro. Jolly scale is different. Mm. The jolly scale is different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, like yeah. there's not, there's not many trilogies that the third one is like a hit. What name of no. trilogy? The third one is like, phenomenal well mm, a hit i liked raiders i liked uh, the last crusade indiana jones and the last crusade okay that's one but it's not a trilogy because they made another one so i guess that doesn't matter anymore right because what about what about um, like star wars it's not it, like the, the original ones yeah the original three star wars i would say return of the jedi was a great movie but I it's I th- I thought it was I mean that's a good one but I see that's the thing like they're very few and far between probably one would argue that Back to the Future Three was terrible it was horrible I liked it <laughs> that's that's for another test Ninja Turtles Anyways. Three bad Turtles in Time that was a bad movie and that but movie is terrible should never even yeah oh wow Godfather Three terrible film. Ugh. I mean, I didn't get to see Face the Music yet, the third Bill and Ted, uh, but I'm hearing a lot of great things um, about that film. So There's nothing great about that film. Sh- dude, dude, shut your mouth. It's fine. Notice how they have not made a third Wayne's World. I just want you to notice that because no one Listen, is clamoring it is fine. for a third it Wayne's World. Fine, but it, it is fine, but it's not. It's good for a part three of a, uh, if you put it on that scale. like. Yeah. A a, against all trilogies it's pretty good yeah but it's nothing like if it didn't get made i wouldn't be upset anyways yeah, yeah. right no before Matrix we do this revolutions. Test, um <laughs> yeah oh my god terrible. It's terrible. terrible fucking terrible right before we do fi- wrap this up just yeah, shout out to, yeah uh shout out to lee's uh mentioned to me because uh, we were going back and forth of what is what is a Christmas movie. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, those who are listening would argue about this, too. I know, and we even mentioned, a couple people mentioned Die Hard is a Christmas I'm, movie. I'm tired of you know what? I'm, I, you know what? Just because it was taking place during Christmas doesn't mean it's a Christmas mo- movie. Right. What, what is it mentioned one time? You see a Christmas tree in the, in the lobby and then they're at a Christmas party. Is yeah. that why? I don't think That's that counts. Why. I'm. I don't think that counts. The rest I'm of the sorry. movie is about him. Terrorist. Gremlins. Christmas movie. A hundred percent. I'm saying Christmas. Movie. Gremlins is a Christmas movie. Ready? Shout out to Lee. Batman Returns. Dude, I knew you were gonna say. I. I was watching you, and you're sitting there. You're like, mm, and I'm like, he's gonna say Batman something, and I'm like, here we go. Like, you know. Batman Returns. Uh, I. I have to go back to it, but yeah, it does take place during Christmas most of the time. Is that it's the one Christmas. with the penguin? Yes. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched that movie in a while. And Friday After Next. Oh, I think that is a Christmas movie. <laughs> is that a Christmas movie? <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I haven't seen it. Man, we got a lot movie. of tests coming up in the seasons. All right, Dan. Uh, all right, well. We're yeah, here. Tell me. We are, we are here. We're at, the, we're at the critical point of the I of mean, the it goes back to this uh, podcast destroys movies. We make fun of <laughs> things that we love the most. Yeah. Right. We get Quick deep care. on these things. Yeah. I love this movie. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and take away the jolly scale. It's still good, man. It's a good 90s film. Yeah. It, you know, you got everything about the 90s that were awfully great. Mm-hmm. You got shoulder pad for days. You got tucked in, tucked in t-shirts, mom pants, bowl haircuts. For men and women. That mom had a bowl haircut too. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Um, uh, jackets beyond oh. jackets of fluff. Oh my God, Wynn oh. did not stand a chance. No, in not the at 90s. all. And his car yeah. was such a boxy car. The cars were so boxy. Ah, oh, they were so nothing boxy. sleek in the nineties. No, nothing was aerodynamic. 
Nothing. Nothing. The food looked terrible. Oh, the food looked was like the, garbage. The sweaters. Oh. Wow. Everything looked Anyways. bad. Anyways. But in that great way. I'm saying this thing <laughs> blows the test. The, the nostalgia podcast jolly test yes. out of the water and it yeah. should be mentioned more in christmas movies yeah that people talk about people need to respect this film i totally agree with everything you're saying this is a this movie definitely passes the nostalgia test it blows the nostalgia test out of the water it is still good people need to be watching it more i feel like this movie during christmas needs to be seen more and it, and the thing is what's funny is like <laughs> when i think back on our on the uh <laughs> on our Halloween episode and, and when we did the Halloween stuff I was like yeah, I was like oh man we're gonna do another themed you know uh, month right and I was like oh man let's hope this one's a little better than Halloween, <laughs> Halloween was just like... yeah and yeah. I feel like we've had a pretty good run I feel like um, the holiday season you know I mean yeah the friends when we started Thanksgiving with the friends episode was like oh boy you know, it got shaky there for a minute, but I feel like you know this has been this is going to be good. Um, uh, this is bittersweet for me. Oh, okay. It's bittersweet that that we're coming to the end. Like by the time yeah. everybody hears all this, like yeah, we're not we're not putting any more to the test, right? No, we, we have one know. last holiday episode coming up, and that would be our uh, year end wrap up. I know. So I was watching. I was I I was actually excited that we did this. I was yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, ah, oh, another themed one. But man, the the two movies that we reviewed, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, both passed the test, right? They both passed. They both passed the test. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this yeah. is a really and it, I feel like people are looking for good stuff, to, like good movies to watch, and and in and Christmas movies, I think already have that part of it that like makes it good. Um, it's a Christmas movie. I have a lot of leeway for Christmas movies, but um, this one. Tell you, Jolly Scale starts up here. Yeah, this one though, like was a pleasant surprise because it was legitimately funny. Oh, it was funny. It was great for kids. It was just, it was great. That, good, that, good movie, that, man. I want more about those Denny's, the Denny's dads, though. That that we, that we need the Denny's dad. This is if anyone's out there that writes movies, we need Denny's dad. <laughs> Like the a whole, just like I don't know, thirty minute sketch, or even put this on an SNL sketch, like of what happens with these guys afterwards. All right, oh, God. go back to them, and we need the movie of the guy <laughs> who Tim killed or did not kill, who chose to finally be done with being yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to like it would be awesome to see him like go back to normal. Oh yeah, and try to get his right? job back. Like, does it go back to like what he was before? Or maybe the guy was like only Santa Claus for one year and he's like, yo, have this job. <laughs> this is crazy. You're like about you fun. never yeah. you never see Bernard going like, Yeah, that guy sucked. So thank God you showed up. Like they never <laughs> say anything. No, that guy was not good at his job. No, and his job is literally automatic. I mean, he grabs a bag, the bag brings him inside, he throws the uh, empties the bag, and then he goes back up in the next house. But it's got to be maddening. It's got to be maddening. It's got to be, dude. I the mean, guy, the guy, they they might have hated him, like because Bernard doesn't talk about him at all. They nobody no. ever gets upset about this. They guy, literally this guy. ghosted that guy. He's like, he's like, he yeah. didn't even exist. They were just like, oh, it was that as guy if died. they knew he was gonna fall. They're like, yeah, like Dude. imagine the scene is that the elf one it was like an elf in the thing, thing, like Judy. Judy was in the sleigh, and then all of a sudden, like Judy pushed him like just a little bit. And then they're cause they're like, fuck this guy. Like he this guy missed about a million houses last year. You know, like we gotta get rid of him. <laughs> this guy's terrible. <laughs> we need a backstory on this guy, the original guy. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> he looks terrible. He must have just they just murdered him, and they, they just like what what do you mean what santa you're santa yeah you're, you're santa, santa. You're santa. don't bring him up yeah don't bring him up like he didn't even like scott didn't even ask like tell me a little bit about the guy that was just here like no yeah did he have a family like what about his 
<laughs> yeah, did he have a kid that wanted to follow him all the time? It seemed like he did it. It was just some guy. It was like like they just grabbed a dude like you. It's just like or like did everybody die? Was the guy like alive for like they never explained whether Scott's gonna be alive forever. But see, that's what I, I don't understand. And a question <laughs> I had until I read the synopsis for Santa Claus 2, the synopsis, the, 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 the problem I had really in the beginning was, one, is Santa immortal, right? And two, is Mrs. Claus just like, oh, God, a new one? I got to keep having relationships with these freaking <laughs> random guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> And every time she's like, who is this guy? It's like, well, this is your new husband. It's like, oh my God. Like, does a Mrs. Claus evaporate too? Like, it's just like, well, you're a new, you're a Mrs. Claus now. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, what happened? Wow. I don't know. So that's what, what I think is that guy was lonely. Mm. And he, like, he had been alive for so long that he was just like, nah, yeah. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. It's gotta, He's yeah. seen it. He's seen it all. It's like, what is that movie that we, I mean, what is that book that we read about that family that was like immortal when we were kids? Uh, Not a wrinkle in time. I don't was know. it a wrinkle in time? No, the, the family wasn't immortal in the wrinkle in time. That one kid had like. It starts off with kid. like, starts off with like a car almost running over a toad. And was, they're like, oh, it's like the toad didn't move because it wasn't scared of dying. Uh, oh man, what the hell is this movie? This is a young adult novel. It might be. Book we read it as a kid. Immortal family, or like they didn't—they never got young. Uh, Tuck everlasting. Oh my god, that's it! I never, I never that's read it. that. I never read that, dude. Tuck everlasting. Anyways, I never read this book. Could it? Could it be that that like, you know, everybody wow. gets old. So this guy, this the, you can go totally depressed mode where like the Santa Claus is just like I've seen Mrs. Claus die. I had a kid like Charlie. He died. Everyone's dead. I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, done. It's like interview with a vampire. Yeah. You know, he's like, Christmas spirit is low. This is terrible. I've been, I've been through the Renaissance. I've been through the dark God, ages. Is hilarious. Dude, this is a messed up book. Oh, it's crazy. It's they crazy. Keep- 10-year-old Winifred Winnie Foster is frustrated with her family because they keep her cooped up in a house and considers running away from home. She, they drink from the fountain of youth. And this has been developed into two movies, and one in 1981 and mm-hmm. one in 2002. I haven't seen that one. Wow. This sounds like a real, real head scratcher. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, uh, The Santa Claus. Watch it. Watch it this Christmas. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you've seen it, watch it again. And yeah, let us know what you think. I think this is a an amazing Christmas film. Yeah, guys, let us know what your favorite Christmas movie is. What's the ultimate? It's mm. Christmas time. That's it, not, you yeah, can't no. you can't end Christmas without watching that movie. What is it? Did we not okay. mention it? Next time, man, we're gonna do that movie. No one really talks about. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, the movie. No, that movie was crazy. It's probably not good. That's why I was like, I was going to say we should test it, but then I was looking at it. And I was like, this was depressing. Oh, it was depressing. No, I was looking at it and it got 20% on Rotten Tomato. And I was like, fuck it. I was like, you know, fuck it. I don't care about Rotten Tomato. They gave cocktail five percent. Yeah, like, we're gonna we're gonna have that. We're gonna have to discuss that in our wrap up episode because yeah, it's a problem. But like, it is a good. The, I remember it being an okay movie, but I was like, ah, no man. So I was flipping and I was about to press play on that movie, and I saw this, and I was like, let me just see this first. I put the sombro, and I was like, oh, this is too good not to talk about this movie. Yeah, no, it was. It, was me, it makes me smile, man. It's yeah, good. It was good a movie. Gem absolute job it's everybody one. thank you so much for listening rate review subscribe to the podcast join the mailing list tell your friends about the podcast tell you know share it with like one person if everyone shares with one person that would that's that's a gift you could give us at the nostalgia <laughs> test podcast is to share the podcast doesn't cost you anything it costs nothing it costs nothing. Cost nothing and um yeah and have a great holiday and um We'll see you in the next episode. 
yeah just stay tuned follow us on instagram and see uh, any more live shows that we're going to do and if you do have an exit suggestion for a test oh. even if it's a short test a yeah. 15 minute test let us know suggest the test join the man list do all that good stuff and have an amazing holiday and be safe out there people all right have a good one Peace. thanks for listening to today's episode please subscribe to the nostalgia test podcast to know when new episodes drop don't forget to leave us five stars and a positive review so more people can find the podcast. Share your thoughts and memories on today's topic on our Twitter at Nostalgia Test and on Instagram at The Nostalgia Test. Tune in next time because you never know what pop culture will pop up on The Nostalgia Test.